Reassure me, we aren't going to have to force that one, are we? I don't think we're even capable of doing it. You're going to have to find a way to open it. Why, of course. And what's inside? Something to vanquish them with? Perfect. So, how does it open? We'll need several keys. I found a note from the architect who conceived the mechanism in Mortimer's secret study. We have to first gather five objects before we try anything. Are the five objects the keys? Exactly. We have the Clement III cross, the nails, the Gutenberg Bible, the exegesis of Judas, an armillary sphere, and all we need to match up the dates between the different calendars. Why a cross? Well, I haven't the foggiest idea, but it just so happens that's what you are going to use to activate the mechanism. I found the one Mortimer kept. It belonged to Cardinal Guibert, better known by the name of Pope Clement III. Perfect. Where is it? Unfortunately, I've lost it. When I lost my hand, I went dashing out, and it must have fallen from my pocket. Remember, Mother, I I'm certain you can remember. Let me think. You were running? I was bleeding to death. You remember the pain? I thought I was going to faint. Yes, I remember. I don't think it can be far, can it? Would you have lost it outside? No, I don't think so. It must be in the area. I don't remember going up with it. Perfect. I'll search the crypt before leaving. Some nails? Don't ask me. I'm not the one who made the mechanism, you know. When I arrived, there were already a few of them inserted, so I didn't have to worry about those. On the other hand, I remember seeing some in Mortimer's secret study, behind his nightmare. In a golden cup? Yes. Yes, I saw them too. Perfect. It will be easy for you to find them then. You need three of them. Very well. You remember what to do about the rollers. 1191 to enter, and 6466 to exit. Of course. Exegesis. Anything else? Hmm. You... Did you manage to vanquish the Medusa? To open the chimney? Yes, absolutely. So you've already come across it. It's the Bible of Judas that is exposed in the secret room behind the chimney. Why do they call it an exegesis? Because that's what it is, and not an apocryphal Bible, strictly speaking. It's the study of a text with a summary, not an actual Bible. Anyway, well done for the Gorgon. You did well. You didn't get tricked by the light bouncing back. Thanks. Do you think I can take it safely? We haven't got a choice, Louis. Without it, we won't be able to work out this cursed mechanism. There's one in the portrait gallery. Yes, but it's enormous. If you don't want to have to go back and forth several times, then I suggest you get a smaller one. What did you do then? I didn't think I'd need one. I started without one, and I lost my hand before I did need one. And you can see the result. This is the book in which you left your correspondence with Duchess Hillsborough, isn't it? That's right. You still believe it's in the tower room, don't you? I don't know. There is only one way to find out, though. Right. I shall go and see. What do you mean by the concordance of dates, exactly? Don't worry about that. We already have them. They are written on the back of the message I just gave you. One last thing before you go. Be very careful. If you come across anyone, they can all potentially be spies of Mortimer or Holm. Don't ever confide in anyone because a demon can slip inside them at any moment. Wait, not all of them though. Take Washington. Especially Washington. He's been conditioned by Mortimer for years. Look at them for crying out loud. How do you explain their behavior otherwise? The most influential politicians in the Western world gather together without the least protection, without a single aid to assist them, to participate in a conference during which the guests start dropping like flies. Me, Adams, Peru, Hillsborough. Look at the number of calamities that have happened over the past few days. And not one of them has asked to leave the island? Do you find that normal? You'll see. Go up to the manor to look for the keys, and I wager not one of them will speak to you about my being in Emily's room. Do you think so? Go on, you'll see. And come back with all the objects in one go. Time is against us. And remember, 
The code to get out of the secret office is 6466. Famous cross of Claymont the Third. Perfect. One key found. Definitely an armillary sphere, but I have to find one that I can take with me. Otherwise, I risk drawing too much attention to my comings and goings. Now, where can I find a smaller one? Right. Let's see if the statues are in place yet. That statue is not positioned correctly. That statue is not positioned correctly. Open sesame. So that's the exegesis of Judas. I hope Mortimer doesn't read it very often, otherwise he's going to notice that someone's stolen it. But that's just too bad. I need it. Right. I've got what I need. Now let's not waste any more time.
an armillary sphere. Perfect. That will save me some time. I only hope that he isn't going to realize it right away. This time, it'll be a lot quicker. If I remember rightly, the code was 1191. There. Those are the nails I was looking for. I noticed they were old and rusty, but... But I hadn't noticed these traces of... Could that be blood? It, is it really the relic of the Holy Cross? I can hardly believe it. Come on, let's get out of here. 6466, six, six, if I remember correctly. Ah, Louis. Glad you're here. Blasted. He's gonna talk about my mother. Come and see what I've found. There are pieces of paper in the ashes of the chimney. Someone's been burning something here. Incredible. He doesn't seem to want to speak to me about what happened between my mother and the Hillsborough sisters. Show me a little. Look, it's possible to distinguish two different writing styles. Hmm. The rest of the correspondence between my mother and Emma. Someone tried to burn an exchange of messages. I'm certain there must be more. Shit. What on earth is he doing? If you want my opinion, a, a servant must have burnt some old papers. That's all. Why, of course. You very nearly made me think that you were trying to hide something, Louis. 
No, I'm sure there must be other hidden messages. He won't let go. He's going to work his way back to the Bible if he continues. Oh, the Bible's still there. A drachma. So, good. You've managed to gather all the keys. Yes, that's right. I have everything. What should I start with? Place the Clement III cross on the console. Then you have to put the nails on the disc of the door. What hole should I put the nails in? Well, I can't really advise you there, because I haven't exactly made the best choices myself. All I can say is that you have to insert one to choose a town, one to choose a chapter, and one to choose a verse. What theme did you start with? As the fresco shows the birth of Christ, I placed one nail in Bethlehem, one in chapter 2, and one in verse 6. The iris opened a little. I thought it was normal. Behind the aperture of the iris, there is a duct in which I put my hand. I felt something like a valve at the bottom. I thought by turning it the door would open, or the iris would open completely, or something else would happen. Instead, I felt something like an axe cut off my hand. I really thought it was the end of me. What did you do then? Well, although I had made some unfortunate choices, I was lucky in that Mortimer was well stocked with drugs. I raided his supplies of medicine. All right, my turn now. Go ahead, impress me. I'll shut up and let you concentrate.
This exegesis contains comments from Judas on the different Gospels. It only contains certain chapters and verses, and the chapters are indicated by Roman numerals. The lexicon refers to different chapters and verses from the exegesis of Judas. Chapter 19, verse 17. Jesus was crucified on the 8th of Nisan, 3,793, in a place near Jerusalem. The Romans put a crown of thorns on his head. Chapter 19, verse 17. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, on either side, and Jesus in the midst. The fresco clearly shows the birth of Christ. Louis, I can assure you that that is not the solution to this enigma. This fresco's only purpose is to mislead. I know that now. Please, focus on another theme about Christ. We'll have to trust her. Yes, it's definitely a representation of the birth of Christ, but some of the details have flaked away. I can't see any other clues. One thing is for sure, this enigma deals with the life of Jesus, like my mother said. You could see that the pain has come off in parts. Difficult to see what was there, but I can distinguish the letters N, R, I. Nothing more. Why, of course, they're part of the initials I, N, R, I that you can find on the cross of Jesus at his crucifixion. Hmm, it looks like there are three types of inscriptions. There, there are three styles of writing and I've got three nails. There must be a link. I must surely put in one nail per category. These towns have one thing in common. They're all related to the life and death of Jesus. For example, Jordan is the place of the baptism of Christ.
chapter 24, verse 3. Jesus rose from the dead on the 14th of Nisan, 3,793, in Nazareth. He appeared with a halo above his head. Chapter 24, verse 3. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly, two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. Chapter 19, verse 17. Jesus was crucified on the 8th of Nisan, 3793, in a place near Jerusalem. The Romans put a crown of thorns on his head. Chapter 19, verse 17. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him on either side, and Jesus in the midst. It works. Well done, Louis. I hadn't seen those other wheels. Try connecting the theme to see if it goes all the way. There must surely be a connection between the wheels. This wheel contains several symbols made up of one or two figures and one letter. The highest figure does not exceed 31, and each letter corresponds to a month of the year. A for April, and M for March. I think these symbols must represent a specific date. Look at this. There are notches between each of the wheels. So, I have to link the name of the town from the theme I've chosen to an icon, then to a date, and finally, the date to the moon. This wheel represents the different moons. In the occult sciences, we represent the full moon by an X. As for the dark moon, called the new moon, in cults, it's, well, it's often associated with something harmful.
I can feel the lever at the bottom. Good luck. I never doubted you, my son. 